Now let's look at the second question which is also related to calculation of gas pressure and it reads the diagram below shows a gas trapped by a column of mercury in a J tube and surely the diagram looks like a J. Now when you look at the diagram you realize there is a gas somewhere here or air which has been trapped because it has nowhere to pass here you have mercury so with this gas this mercury cannot fill here because the gas keeps on pushing the mercury down and by pushing it down it makes the mercury level to rise so the height the difference in height is 32 centimeters and remember this distance this this height is also called the excess pressure so if the statement says if the atmospheric pressure is 100,000 newtons per meter squared find the pressure of the enclosed air to max so we need the pressure of the enclosed air this gas which is trapped here so as usual we said uh, maybe let's look at here they have also given us what density of mercury is given and then acceleration due to gravity is also given so as part of our solution we shall say the pressure of a gas is given by atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to the liquid column you see the pressure of this gas here that is open this is open to atmospheric pressure so atmospheric pressure plus the pressure of the liquid column gives you the pressure of the, the gas so what is atmospheric pressure the atmospheric pressure is in newtons per meters squared see what about the pressure due to the liquid column the pressure due to the liquid column is 32 centimeters so we have to add the two unfortunately this one is in centimeters of mercury because this is a mercury which is there this one is in newtons per meter squared so what do we do we have to convert uh, this one to newtons per meter squared then we can add so this one is already in newtons per meter squared then we add the pressure due to the liquid column how do you convert centimeters of mercury into newtons per meter squared you apply the formula h rho g if this height and atmospheric pressure were having the same units we would just add but they are not the same so you have to change this one centimeters of mercury into newtons per meter squared so this one is already newtons per meter squared so we change this one to newtons per meter squared by using h rho g the height we are given is 32 centimeters so we change it to meters which is the si unit so we divide this by 100 why do we do that because one meter is the same as 100 centimeters so when you are changing centimeters into meters you divide by 100 then we multiply by density. Now this density depends on the liquid which is in the tube. If it is a mercury, use the density of mercury. And that's why they have given us here the density of mercury. If it is water, use the density of water. If it is alcohol, use the density of what? Alcohol. Depending on the liquid which is here. So right now, the density is for mercury. And they have given us. So we multiply. Times the density of mercury times acceleration due to gravity, which is 10. So, when you multiply all this, you come to this, and then you add it to this one. Now, here it means you have already changed this to newtons per meter squared, and yet these ones are already newtons per meter squared, so you can add them. So, at this point, the two have the same units. And when you add, you get 1, 4, 3, 5, 2, 0 newtons per meter squared. So, remember, there were how many max? Two max. So the first one will go for a half for the formula saying pressure of a gas is atmospheric pressure plus pressure due to the liquid column. Then substitution, a half, correct answer, and the correct unit. Now let us look at applications of atmospheric pressure. If somebody asked you to state applications of atmospheric pressure, 
So we have a number of them. Atmospheric pressure is used in the force pumps. We are going to look at that. We use also atmospheric pressure when we are sucking a liquid out of uh, a straw. So when you are using a drinking straw, for example, when you are taking a soda, we also use them in rubber suckers. We also use them in uh, syringes. The syringes which doctors use for injections. They also use atmospheric pressure. So straight away, let's look at the first application, the drinking straw, how the soda, how the beer, how the liquid is able to come to your mouth. Assuming this is the container which has the liquid, this is the liquid, and here you have the straw. Now this space, this place here, above the liquid surface, it is open to atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure keeps on pressing the liquid downwards. And by pressing the liquid downwards, what happens when you are sucking air or when you are sucking a liquid? You see, when you are using a straw to suck a liquid, what happens? As you pull, the pressure inside this straw reduces. Now, when the pressure reduces, it means pressure outside is now more. Atmospheric pressure becomes greater than the pressure which is inside the straw. So what happens? Because the atmospheric pressure is now in excess, it is now greater than the pressure which is inside the straw. It will press the liquid downwards, and then you can see this arrow, these arrows here. So the liquid will find itself passing through the straw easily. So this is a liquid rising up through the straw. This is the straw itself. This is a container. Inside there's a liquid and there's atmospheric pressure pressing. So we are saying this atmospheric pressure is greater. The external pressure that is greater. Why do we say it is greater? Greater means the pressure inside uh, becomes less. So let us see. So if somebody says, explain uh, how a drinking straw is able to help somebody take in the soda easily, it means this person is trying to ask you about application of atmospheric pressure on the drinking, uh, using the drinking straw. So this is what we say, that when a person sucks a liquid with a straw, what happens? When a person sucks a liquid using a straw, the pressure of air inside the straw reduces. Pressure inside reduces. What does that mean? It means the pressure outside becomes more. So for that reason, the greater external atmospheric pressure, so the pressure outside, which is atmospheric pressure, now becomes greater. What does it do? Acting on the liquid surface forces the liquid, forces the liquid to rise through the straw to the person's mouth. So, as somebody sucks a liquid using a straw, what happens? The pressure inside reduces, that is inside the straw, reduces. Which means the pressure outside becomes more than the pressure inside. For that reason, the external pressure, which is a greater, forces the external, greater external pressure, atmospheric pressure acting on the liquid surface, forces the liquid to rise up through the straw to the person's mouth. So if somebody tells you as an exercise, explain why it is easy to suck a liquid out of a bottle using a drinking straw and it's five marks. You see how the marks are awarded? Look at the diagram. So labeling the diagram uh, this is one mark, could be for drawing the accurate diagram. Then you have some for labeling. Then there are key words which you have to mention. As a person sucks a liquid using a straw, yes, the pressure of air inside the straw reduces. So the greater atmospheric pressure, which is now external, acting on the surface of the liquid, forces the liquid to rise through the straw to the person's mouth. So that is the first application of atmospheric pressure. Let's look at the second one. Now, the second one is the rubber sucker. 
rubber sucker has very many uses we are going to look at it but briefly this is how it looks like so when you're using a rubber sucker it is better to make it moist you pour some little water to make it moist so this is the rubber sucker this one and this is the surface we are saying a smooth surface so what you do you get your rubber sucker put some little water to make it moist and then you press it press it you see you press it, press it on the smooth surface. When you do that, the air which is inside will come out. And when it comes out, inside here, there will be no air. That's why we are calling it what? A vacuum. Now, remember we said atmospheric pressure acts on a body in all directions. So this will be the atmospheric pressure acting on the rubber sucker. Now, outside there's atmospheric pressure. Inside, before you removed the air, there was inside pressure. Now that you pressed this, you started by pressing this rubber sucker against the, the smooth surface. So the air went away. So the air which was creating pressure inside went away, which means inside here, the pressure has been reduced. Because there is no air. You see, it is a vacuum. But outside, there is a pressure pressing. So what happens? It makes now this rubber sucker... To remain here stuck because the pressure pressing it against the, the, the smooth surface is more than the pressure inside which is pushing it what outside so this is the rubber sucker so let's look at it in words in writing that when a rubber sucker is moistened and pressed on a smooth surface the air inside it is forced out you see when you make your rubber sucker moist and then you press it against the smooth surface, the air inside goes away. So inside remains a vacuum. Thus, for that reason, the pressure inside is reduced and the contact between it and the surface becomes airtight, you see? Because inside now, there it is a vacuum. So you realize that the surface and, uh, the, surface and the rubber sucker, that space, that contact becomes airtight. So what happens, the atmospheric pressure becomes greater than the pressure inside. So the greater atmospheric pressure acts on the sucker, pressing it against the wall firmly. Now the second application, rather the third one of atmospheric pressure, is the syringe. The syringe which doctors use for injections uses atmospheric pressure for easy operation now if this is this the syringe uh, when the doctor wants when he wants the liquid he wants the medicine to enter inside the syringe what does he do he pulls the piston upwards so this is the piston then when he wants to inject you now he presses down the piston so we want to know when the piston moves up what happens and when the piston moves down what happens now remember here you have the liquid the medicine which you want to enter uh, and there is atmosphere this medicine is open to atmospheric pressure so the atmospheric atmospheric pressure is pressing it down so if you want this medicine to go inside you pull this side up and when you pull it up what happens to the pressure inside here the pressure inside here reduces. This is the barrel. This is what we call the barrel. Now he, inside the barrel we have the liquid. So the pressure inside the barrel reduces. And when it reduces, the pressure outside, which is external atmospheric pressure, becomes greater than the pressure inside. So it presses the liquid down as you see the arrows like this. And then it forces the liquid to rise through the barrel. Now, what happens when now the piston is moved downwards by pressing downward? What happens? The liquid is driven out of the nozzle. The nozzle is this part here, which is now inside the, the liquid. So briefly, this is the barrel. You have the liquid. This is the piston, which can either be moved outwards or inwards, this atmospheric pressure. So we are saying, uh, we are saying that the nozzle, we are saying that the nozzle of the syringe is put inside a liquid. So the first thing is get the nozzle put inside the liquid. 
Then after that, you start pulling the piston outwards. So on pulling the piston outwards, pressure inside the barrel reduces. What does that mean? The pressure outside becomes more, greater. So the greater atmospheric pressure forces the liquid into the barrel. Now what happens when you push, now you push the piston downwards? That is inwards. Pushing the piston inwards drives the liquid out of the, the nozzle. So when you press the piston down, you are making the liquid to move out of the nozzle. So this is how the syringe works. So you'll be able to answer this person properly that explain how a syringe works during treatment of patients. That means this person wants you to explain uh, how a syringe works. So you need to draw the diagram. You can see the ticks. There's a diagram for, there's a tick for, marks for the diagram, marks for uh, labeling, proper labeling. Then now you go and get your marks for explanations. You see? And you can score all the marks. Now, where do we use the syringes? We use the syringes uh, to help us during injection to inject patients in hospitals by doctors. So doctors use syringes to inject patients when they are treating them in hospitals. The farmers also use syringes for spraying crops in gardens. So if you want to spray crops in the gardens, there are particular syringes which you can, you can use. Now, there is another application of atmospheric pressure. There is a machine called the vacuum cleaner. A vacuum cleaner is used to clean carpets, beds, couches, and floors easily at once. You see? So if you want to clean your carpets, you want to clean the beds, you simply use a vacuum cleaner. How does it work? When a vacuum cleaner is switched on, what happens? The air inside it, the pressure of air inside or the air pressure inside reduces. And once the pressure inside reduces, it means the pressure outside becomes more. For that reason, the external atmospheric pressure becomes greater and overcomes the residue particles in the cleaner's duct. So the atmospheric pressure becomes greater than the pressure inside. And therefore it will force the dust, it will force all the dirt to come out.